Hey guys, assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn a little bit more about money. That is, its history and development over time. This is important for us to proceed with today's video on what backs the money supply. Now, before money was introduced, exchange of goods and services took place by the barter system. But as we have seen in the previous video, the shortcomings of barter eventually made people realize that they need to use other things as an intermediary to make buying and selling of goods easier. So what follows is the evolution or development of money over time. The earliest form of money is known as the commodity money, whereby many peculiar things were used as money by various cultures in the past. These things commonly have intrinsic value, that is, its value is defined by the materials that it's made from. For instance, cowrie shells in West Africa, beads among the North American Indians, and cattle in Southern Africa. However, the use of commodities as money has several disadvantages. One, the items vary in size and quality, thus it is not easy to carry them around for settlement of debts. Two, they may be too large and not easily divisible for making small purchases. And three, they are durable as their values may be affected by disease, old age, or death. Due to the disadvantages of commodities as money, precious metals such as gold and silver came into use. The world's first coins appeared around 600 BC by the Lydians, which is a kingdom tied to ancient Greece and located in modern-day Turkey. Metals do not have the same drawbacks as commodities and are easily manageable into smaller pieces for daily transactions. So naturally, coins became widely used and thus money had an intrinsic value as metal. Gold coins were first used during the Roman and Persian era known as denarius. The Arabs called the Roman denarius as dinar. The first Islamic dinar, or gold coins, and dirham, silver coins, were introduced during the era of Caliph Abdul al-Malik. But due to the Quranic ban on representational art, the Islamic dinar did not bear the images of the rulers as traditionally practiced at the time. Rather, they were decorated with Islamic calligraphies. Because of this, the gold dinar became associated to Muslims and is referred to as the Islamic currency. However, the usage of gold coins or gold dinar ended in 1924 after the fall of the Ottoman Turkish Empire. The emergence of paper money is as early as the 7th century, during the Tang Dynasty in China. It was used for over 500 years before Europe caught on when banknotes were developed by the goldsmith bankers in the second half of the 17th century. Now the main reason why banknotes were developed was this. Back then, merchants, they traveled by sea. So obviously, they didn't want to be carrying around their gold coins. It would be too heavy, too bulky, too troublesome. Besides that, it's also for safety purposes because they didn't want the pirates to be robbing their gold coins in the middle of the sea. So what happened is when these merchants arrive at those cities, they will be conducting their business with the locals there much easier using bank notes. So whenever the customers, if they wanted their coins back, they just simply go back to the goldsmith to have their coins returned. When shopkeepers in the local market sold their goods and received the coins from the merchants, they would also keep those coins with the goldsmith and get the banknotes in exchange. Soon, shopkeepers started to accept the banknotes directly from the customers to save the trip to the goldsmith. Over time, people got used to using these banknotes instead of the gold coins and considered them as a good substitute for the coins. The use of paper money led to the development of bank deposits, which are money placed in banks for safekeeping. These bank deposits are transferable by checks, where a check is written from the owner of a bank deposit to a banker, instructing the bank to transfer a stated amount of money to another person named on the check. The banker simply carries out the instruction by reducing the deposit of the drawer or payer and crediting the account of the payee. In more recent years, there's a widespread use of hard plastic cards to replace actual banknotes and checkbooks in everyday transactions. They come in many forms, such as credit cards and debit cards. Technically, they are not money, but serve as a means of payment. And the latest evolution of money is the cryptocurrency, which is used as a medium of exchange. But unlike its predecessors, Cryptocurrency is virtual or digital in nature, meaning that there is no physical coin or banknote that owners of the currency can hold. 
Instead, it is created and held electronically in a computer. One of the first forms of cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. This type of money is still relatively new, but many have argued that they have a future in the world markets. So we've already learned about the history or development of money over time. Now let's take a look at the origin of banks. As you've seen before, these merchants, they traveled from cities to cities by sea, whereby they carry bank notes instead of bringing their gold coins for safety reasons. Now, whenever they travel to a particular city, they will be conducting their business with the locals there. At the end of every transaction, bank notes are exchanged for goods. So whenever these shopkeepers or customers, if they want their gold coins back, all they have to do is carry those bank notes that they received from the merchants to the goldsmith. And the goldsmith will then just exchange the value of what's written on the bank notes with the gold back to the shopkeepers and customers. Likewise, merchants can do the same thing back in their own city, whereby, because they'll be carrying a lot of bank notes, right, from the shopkeepers and customers at various cities, so all they have to do is just bring the bank notes that they received to their goldsmith, and they can get back their gold coins. Now, over the years, people have realized that, you know, they want to save a trip. They don't want to keep on going to goldsmith every time they want to convert or exchange their banknotes with gold. So what they do is they just keep on exchanging these banknotes because people know the banknotes are backed, you know, backed by the gold anyway. So instead of just keeping going back to the goldsmith and getting our coins and going back there to get more banknotes or whatever, so people just leave their gold with the goldsmith and carry on their daily transactions using bank notes. Everyone is comfortable doing that because everyone has faith that the bank notes are backed by the gold being held by the goldsmith. Over time, the goldsmith realizes he has a lot of gold in his collection because people are comfortable with just using bank notes, right, in their daily activities. So these goldsmiths are also smart men. They well, they thought to themselves, hey, I've got all this gold here. I can do something with it and get extra money. So what they do is they will then broadcast or publicize to the public. Does anyone want to borrow some gold? You know, you can come here and I can issue you with some bank notes and give it to you. You know, you can use it and you can uh, pay back to me later. But of course, with interest, meaning that if initially you borrowed 100 gold coins, you need to return back 100 plus plus interest. So guys, that's basically how the bank um, was formed. So you can say that the goldsmith is actually the bank's great, 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 great grandfather. So you've already learned about the history of money over time as well as the history of how banks were formed, rather simply. So now let's take a look at what backs the money supply. Now, as you can see from our simple illustration here, back then, all of the bank notes are backed by gold. What that means is each and every bank note is redeemable for its value in gold by the government or the goldsmith at the time. Now, this was meant to increase the confidence of the paper money, you know, so because people know that it is linked to something valuable, that is gold. However, over the century, many problems arose and made it impossible to retain this gold standard, including the First World War and the Great Depression. After the Second World War, many countries, including the United States, replaced the gold standard with the Bretton Woods system. That is, European countries had to fix their currencies against the U.S. dollars, since, well, the U.S. at the time was the largest holder of gold supply. However, in 1971, President Nixon untied the link between the U.S. dollar and the gold, and this led to the collapse of the Bretton Woods system. Following this move, all of the world's currencies became fiat money. What that means is, it's just paper money that is not worth the value printed on it, and hence, this fiat money have no intrinsic value. So fiat money is issued by governments and it's not backed by something physical like gold. Rather, fiat money is backed by the public's confidence that their government can keep the value of the money stable. So since fiat money has no intrinsic value, that is, they are no longer backed by gold, what backs the current money supply? 
The current money supply is simply just backed by the government's ability to keep the value of the money relatively stable. Among the steps taken by the government to ensure that its money is accepted is by declaring that its paper money has legal tender. Legal tender simply means that the money is recognized by law for paying for goods and services and accepted in settlements of debts within the country. However, uh, one of the dangers of fiat money is that the government may be inclined to print too much of it, which may result in hyperinflation. So it is very, very important for governments to ensure that money is relatively scarce.